As of right now, inside of ClickFunnels 2.0, there's not an image carousel element in place. So I went ahead and created one for you to use to your advantage. All right, so um, this is actually based off of a conversation that I had with someone the other day. Uh, they were running into a scenario where they were trying to have like advertising space filled up and rotate between different advertisers on their site, uh, but they couldn't find a way to actually create something like this directly inside the platform. So um, I went to work, created something that you can also use. It's gonna be custom code. I'm, I'm gonna share the old code and everything like that that you can use inside of your own workspace or funnel or you know, whatever it is that you're trying to create here uh, within ClickFunnels 2.0 and it'll allow you to achieve the same exact thing. So basically all it is is you have a couple images laid out on the actual page. And I'll go into the editor in a second and show you how it's set up, but all it is is a few image elements layered on top of one another, and we're just going in and calling the row itself, taking the row ID, basically that these are in, and it's going to apply the same effect, so it doesn't matter how many images you add, but it's gonna apply the same effect to every image inside of that row. Okay, it's just gonna cycle through. You can go in and adjust the timing. You can make it so it's faster or slower. It's totally up to you. Okay, let's go ahead and actually show you what is going on here inside of the editor. If you go to the settings drop down in the top right side of the screen, click on show code, uh, you'll find the actual code itself that I'm gonna show you right here um, in the description somewhere, either maybe the comments area. I know YouTube's a little weird about uh, pasting code directly in the, the description. So if it's not there directly, there will be a link to something like a Google Sheets or, or uh, um, a, a doc, something like that, where you can actually access the code you need. But aside from that, it's um, uh, all you have to do is copy and paste it into the header code within the area we're looking at right now. All right, just copy, paste, and from here, there's two things that you would want to go in and adjust. Really, I mean, you don't have to adjust anything besides the actual container ID. But uh, if you want to, you can go and adjust the interval, which is basically the time it takes for, uh, or in between each of the images to display. You can change it right now. I mean, as of right now, it's at 2,500 milliseconds. If you want to increase it, again, just click right here, backspace, pull whatever number you want. You can put 5,000, you can put 10,000, whatever you can imagine, right? Uh, you can put it to zero if you want to. I mean, if you want to be rapid, you can, <laughs> you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna leave it as is though, but just know that that is set up right here and you can go and adjust as one or as needed. Um, the next thing is gonna be, I already kind of touched on it, but the row ID or the container ID. In this case, I'm using a row container ID. So essentially uh, it's going to make every image that's within that row itself or the container that we're taking ID for um, added to this rotation. So you can go down on the page itself in the editor. You can continue to add images. And I know they all display like this, but as long as you're okay with overlooking this, <laughs> it's gonna be okay. Cause in the live page itself, you're not gonna see it as far as how it's laid out like this. You're gonna see it one at a time like this, okay? Um, yeah, anyways, you can continue to add you know, more images to this specific rotation if you want to. Now to actually grab the ID you need to make sure this works properly and have all the images cycle through, we need to go to the live page. Go ahead and just preview by clicking a little eyeball icon there. And at this point, we can scroll to the row that you'd like to use. Now, for example, I'm gonna use this guy right here. Now, in order to actually grab the ID for the row itself, all we have to do is go and right click on the page. It doesn't matter actually if we're in a live or a preview, I should specify that. We just have to be outside of the editor when we do this. Now, um, again, you can right hand click on a page and click on inspect at the very bottom. And if you do this, there's gonna be an extra step you have to do, but you can definitely go this route if you prefer. Otherwise, if you enjoy keyboard shortcuts, you can use Command Shift C if you're using Mac and Control Shift C if you're using Windows. Um, if you use the keyboard shortcuts, it makes it a little bit easier because then you don't have to do the extra step. The extra step is going in and making sure that this guy right here, this little icon is clicked or lit up blue. Once it is, you'll be able to see that as you hover on the page, you'll have the hover effect enabled, uh, which will allow you to see the different rows, elements, everything. You're basically high highlighting over every single aspect of this page. Once we have the hi highlight tool activated just like this, we can then go around the page and find the specific row. I mean, you can call it however you want, but we're gonna use a row here for the example. Uh, to find the row ID, just hover around until you see something like this, where we see the green border, we see blue and Side, we see some dotted lines specifying the individual columns and on the outside we have the uh, the orange right 
Uh, just click on the green border once you see something like this, and it'll take you directly to the row ID or that, that specific area in the HTML code, okay? Now, you don't have to understand anything aside from what I'm telling you here. We just have to grab the ID that's listed right after where it says class row, okay? Uh, where it says ID-6Z-5Z, right? Just grab this, double click in there, and you can, on your keyboard, hit Command-C. Actually, we wanna make sure we don't bring over a row there. We just want the ID. So go ahead and do Command or Control C, or you can right hand and you know right hand click and then click on Copy. That totally is fine as well. Um, but once we have that number or this actual ID, head back to ClickFunnels and we're gonna go to the Settings dropdown again. Click on Show Code and then go to Header Code. Right. All we have to do here is replace the ID right here. Okay. Make sure I actually get the three gone. Leave the period. That is important and then just paste in the value. All right, once we have that in place, we can go and click out of here, click on save, and well actually, before, we should also act, uh, add another image there because there's only one in place. So let me just pull this guy down. I shall have this as the second image. Now, if we go back to the actual preview page that we have already opened, you can just go and refresh, and at this point, you should see the changes have been applied, right? If we scroll down, we'll see that these images are no longer rotating. It's showing every single one, one at a time. But once we get to this point on the page, there we go, it is now cycling through the images that we have laid out within that row. That's it, that's all you have to do. Um, again, the actual code that you need for this is gonna be inside of the description somewhere. It might not be just listed directly for you to copy and paste. Maybe it's within a Google Sheet or Doc. It depends on how YouTube perceives the code when I paste it in there. Pretty sure they have issues with it um, or they don't like anybody putting custom code in there. Uh, or anything with brackets, rather. Okay, I hope this helps. If you have any questions while going through this, let me know. Um, I can definitely help at least point you in the right direction and uh, get you back up and running. One thing I do want to point out, though, is that if you do not have this period in place in front of the actual ID, it will cause the code to falter. It won't know what to call, basically, without that there. So just make sure that's there. It looks like it's not really important, but I promise it is. Uh, just have that in place, and after that, you're good to go. All right, again, if you have questions on implementing this or you get stuck anywhere, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video.